Most of you watching this don't want to be a power lifter, you just want to get stronger, or you don't want to be an actual bodybuilder, you just want to build muscle. So I'm going to address you first, and then I'm going to address the minority, which are people like me who actually compete in powerlifting, we've done meets before, and people who actually go on a bodybuilding stage, or just going to the gym to attain a good physique, but you don't want to actually be a pro bodybuilder. The reason you should overhead press is twofold. Number one, shoulder health and mobility. I've had injuries to both my shoulders, AC joint in my left and slap tear in my right. The reason why I force myself to overhead press is when I stop doing it, I start to get shoulder pain in my right shoulder and it starts to flare up. I start to lose my mobility, which makes pain, which makes a muscle imbalance. It puts too much emphasis on my chest and it makes my shoulders weaker. So what I did was I started with 135 pounds in the overhead press and it hurt. My shoulder was killing me and I thought maybe this is too much. But eventually with rest, recovery, and adaptation, I hit an all-time PR today of 165, which is two pounds over my all-time personal best for two reps. So I took my one rep max, added two pounds to it, and did it for two reps at a body weight of 171 pounds because I've actually been training the overhead press like I'm supposed to. And it teaches you to use your upper back more because you're supposed to shrug up with your traps. That's just a little side benefit. Most of you have bad shoulder health because all you care about is the bench press. Because even if you're not a competitive power lifter, a lot of gym bros would be like, how much do you bench? I recently worked a food service job and some guy on the other side of the counter saw me in my shirt and went, dude, how much do you bench? That's the gym question. Nobody says how much do you overhead press? Cool people do, but most people don't say how much do you overhead press? The number two reason is you train your back vertically and horizontally so why don't you train your front vertically and horizontally? A good bodybuilding program or strength gaining program will have you train your back in a vertical plane of motion and a horizontal plane of motion. Think chin-ups and rows, which are two of my favorite back exercises. I tend to alternate them. Well, when it comes to the front of your body, why would you treat it differently? Why would you only train it in a horizontal plane of motion, but never in a vertical plane of motion. I'm not gonna talk about strongmen because that's obvious. They have to overhead press because they compete in the overhead press. Saving the powerlifters for last because that's gonna be the most complicated and in-depth part of this video, but for my bodybuilders out there who legitimately plan to compete, the number one thing in bodybuilding that you want is longevity because muscle building is a long and difficult process. So kind of to repeat what I said for the other guys about injury risk, but to more emphasize it for you guys, if you tear something in your shoulder or if you have a shoulder imbalance, not only could that ruin your physique because you want a balanced physique, that's what bodybuilding is, but you don't want to have a clicking shoulder or a shoulder that's always bothering you because you're not training it in the full range of motion and now you have to take more frequent deloads, which is less muscle that you're putting on. You don't want to get hurt because if you can't work out, you could put on more body fat and Bodybuilding is a lot about leanness, especially natural bodybuilding. It's really about how lean you can get. The other reason bodybuilders should do it who legitimately plan on competing is it's a compound movement that kills a lot of birds with one stone. You know that if you bench press, you have to do less shoulder and tricep work. Well, if you did bench and overhead press, you would have to do even less tricep and shoulder work or even none at all, depending on how you train to get maximal hypertrophy, which is what all the bodybuilding guys want. You want to be as big as lean as possible. So doing overhead press for you is just another way to get more shoulder and tricep stimulus. Even the side delts, I feel my side delts a bit when I overhead press. It is also a side delt exercise. A little bit, obviously side raises are better, but for someone like me who has an angry shoulder, Overhead press is a huge step up for me. The part of this video I was excited to make because now I'm talking to my people, the power lifters. You see, the thing with bench press is a lot of guys struggle with lockout. You get a little bit off your chest, oh, and then you get stuck. So a lot of you will resort to pin press because you're already strong like this. Perhaps you need to train in a different plan of motion like chin-ups for the front of your body to improve your lockout strength. The proof? I might not have a scientific study, but check out this last rep of 260 pounds. Check out this fourth rep. That is a grinder. Allow me to show you when I tried to bench 308 or 140 kilograms at my powerlifting meet. You know what happens? I got it off my chest, and where did I fail? The lockout. Where do I always fail? The lockout. What's the slowest part of my overhead press? The lockout. What does that mean? It means even though my triceps have a good amount of size, I would say so, and I don't even train them directly anymore and they're still growing, 
It's because they are weak. My triceps are weak for their size. Why? Because I'm always doing wide grip bench press. And even when I do narrow grip bench press, my pecs take over. And when my pecs get tired, my shoulders take over. So then Logan, why don't you just do JM presses or dips? Because that's more of a hypertrophy thing. I want to be stronger. I already have a good amount of muscle mass. I want to be strong. Overhead press is a strength lift. Overhead press gets you stronger, gets your whole body stronger. And the good thing about overhead press too is it helps you with leg drive. It helps you brace. It helps you use your abs versus a dip, which is just, it's just all tricep. The overhead press strengthens your entire body. And as I showed you for that fourth rep of 260, the carryover has been immediate. It has been direct. And because of that, I will never stop overhead pressing. Whether I use my Swiss bar for the neutral grip or I continue to use my straight bar, I will not stop overhead pressing because I have noticed an immediate benefit to my bench press. So true, us powerlifters may never compete in the overhead press. Nobody might care in our community if we're overhead pressing 225 for reps. But what they will care about is your bench press. And if you're doing a lift that positively affects your bench press, they're going to care more about your bench press because it's stronger. That's the thing. You're not going to stop doing rows, are you? Well, you do rows because it helps your deadlift. So all the powerlifters out there, I implore you. If you're on a program that already works, that's fine. If it's not broken, don't fix it. But if you're struggling with your lockout strength like I did for a very long time, it might not be pin presses. It might not be board presses. It might be the oldest, old school, traditional, badass exercise that they did in ancient Greece, ancient Rome. I can guarantee people were doing it during the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. Picking something up and putting it over your head. Brilliant. So I've been lifting for Jesus. God bless. I hope this gets all of you stronger. I hope you start to overhead press and I'll see you next time.